What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Coding with Robbie. I'm your host, Robbie, and in today's video, we got something a little bit different. We're going to be code reviewing my first ever Shopify theme. So, I was on the GitHubs today, and there's a big old banner at the top, and it says, We are having a problem billing the blank organization. Please update your payment method, blah, blah, blah. And basically, uh, this company I worked for, they're no longer paying for their GitHub. I'm the last admin on the organization. So, I was looking in it, I'm like, Oh, what's in here? And lo and behold, I found my first ever Shopify theme. So we're going to be opening it up. We're going to be taking a look at it. We're going to see how bad the code is. And uh, yeah, if you like this kind of video, like and subscribe. If you don't like this kind of video, like and subscribe. I'll take anything I can get. And uh, leave a comment too. Don't forget that. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's go. All right. So before we take a look at the code, I want to look at the actual website. So here she is right here. So this is for uh, buypeel.com from 2015 so almost 10 years old which is pretty crazy to think about and uh here it is we got this hero section with this crossfading uh title text right here with the big shop now button coming down we got a testimonial by uh ryan hoover of product hunt and then there's some big uh banners basically to go to the product pages and that's pretty much it a pretty standard footer down here and then we got the product page over here and I couldn't find one that had all the images and everything, but here's how it looked. The so same header carried over. And then we had some variant selectors right here and a quantity selector, a big add to cart button. So all pretty standard stuff coming down. Here's where it gets a little funny. We got the pin it button. So when's the last time you saw one of those? And then we come down a little bit. We got some specs and information on the product. We got some lifestyle images. This guy was pretty cool. He worked for the company also. Um, and then we got some more testimonials down here. Some more lifestyle. And uh, that's pretty much the site. This is pretty cool. Watch this. Bam, it slides up. And we had a normal cart page. I don't know if this is going to load. I'll try it. So this is the old... Yeah, it's not going to work. But this is an old school cart page where you had the checkout button. And then if you made a quantity change, you had to click the update button. So uh, that's the website. So now the fun stuff, let's take a look at the code. And before you guys laugh at me, let me just give you some context. When I say this is my first Shopify theme, what I mean is this is the first time I even opened Shopify. So it's not like I studied it and I was like ready to code a theme for someone. It was like, hey, Robbie, you could probably figure it out. Give it a try. And I'm like, okay. So you're going to see a lot of stuff in this theme where I'm not taking advantage of Shopify and it's pretty clear I had no idea what I was doing. But the website worked and they're happy. So let's take a look. So right off the bat, kind of what sticks out to me is this grunt file. So grunt was kind of popular before things like Webpack, and you would use it to bundle stuff together and watch your files and do all kinds of stuff. So if we look in here, it looks like I was gluing some JavaScript files together. I was minifying it with Uglify, uh, compiling SAS, watching files for changes, and then it looks like I had some live reload things set up. Pretty standard stuff. Package.json, nothing in here, just uh, grunt dependencies. We got my git ignore, pretty standard. Let's take a look at the index page. So if we go inside the theme folder, so this is kind of interesting. This is before um, they had sections, so there's no sections folder. If we go in templates, you can see it's all liquid files. So it's before uh, they switched to JSON and sections and everything. But let's take a look at the index page. And here she is. So I got a couple snippets at the top and yeah, as you can see, everything is hard coded. So I had no idea how to loop through a collection and get the product object or anything. I just straight up hard coded it. So we got those products at the top, pretty much just a bunch of products here. And uh, this is kind of funny, CF, so that stood for clear fix. So I was using floats everywhere, it seems like. So this was 2015, I think Flexbox was out and gaining popularity, but I guess I was still using floats, which is kind of the old way to do layout. Um, coming down, yeah, just a bunch of products. Let's take a look at some of these snippets. Let's go to Billboard. So uh, Billboard, pretty standard stuff. There's those headings we saw at the top of the website. And then we got the arm image right here. And this is kind of interesting. I got the Shop Now button, but there's no href. Just an ID, so we gotta look at the JavaScript and see what's going on there. Um, let's take a look at what else did we have? Let's see home testimonial. So again, just all hard coded, no meta fields, nothing like that. I had no idea that stuff existed. 
We got that testimonial right there. The HTML actually holds up. I think it's pretty good. It's solid. It's good uh, best practices and everything. No issues there. So I know my HTML and CSS at the time was pretty solid. Uh, JavaScript, I was a complete beginner, and I think we'll see that when we take a look. But yeah, that's the index page. Let's take a look at the header and see how that looks. So we got header right here. I called it master header. I, I don't call it that anymore, but that's pretty cool. Hey, look at this. We got some dynamic stuff. It says, hey, if this is the index page, include class index. Coming down, we got the H1. So this kind of changed a little bit. You don't really see people using the title as the H1 anymore. Nowadays, they kind of put the main text on the page. So if I was coding this today, I would probably put this in the H1. But hey, that was cool too. Coming down, we got a link to cart, hard coded. Cart count is not hard coded though, that's cool. And it looks like I was actually using the locales file, so I probably just copied this from the default theme, whatever it was. Um, so there's the header, let's take a look at the footer. So here we go, I called it the master footer. And uh, yeah, didn't know about navigation menus and looping through that, so everything is hard coded. That's pretty bad, but hey, if it works, it works. And that's pretty much the HTML for the home page. So let's take a look at some of the styles now. Let's go to the CSS folder. And right away, you can see I have this bourbon folder and I actually had to look up what this was, but it was a library that gave you a bunch of SAS mix-ins. So it'd give you stuff like border color and it would apply these styles. And it was pretty popular at the time. I don't think anyone uses it anymore. But yeah, bourbon, it looks like their website's still going strong. So you can check that out. Um, going back, let's take a look at maybe the header CSS. And yeah, on that home page, it was absolutely positioned so it could sit on top of that billboard section. Uh, we got the H1, and yeah, I was using floats everywhere because uh, I don't think Flexbox was too popular yet. I was using SVGs though, so that's kind of cool. Now we got the navigation, all pretty standard stuff. Let's take a look at the billboard section now. And uh, this was a big pain point for me. So I didn't really understand position relative and absolute yet. And this had to stay put right there and basically reveal more as you had a bigger screen or zoomed out. And uh, I know at one point there's just some janky JavaScript that basically kept it in place. And uh, it could have been done a lot simpler, but let's see, I think this is kind of a fixed up version. So yeah, right here you can see it's just centered. And then I had a bunch of breakpoints that basically adjusted it every couple hundred pix pixels. Yeah, tons of breakpoints in this file. But it worked. Um, coming down, let's see. Take a look at the footer, I guess. See if there's anything interesting in there. Pretty standard stuff. Yeah, nothing too interesting in there. Let's take a look at the product page now. So I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea about meta fields or anything. And I remember the first version of this. They wanted to have all this stuff down here be different for every product and I had no idea how to do it. And I was looking at the product section, the product page in the admin panel. Oh man, all I have is this description field. There's nothing else. So my solution on the earliest version was just to throw everything within that description field. So there's a ton of HTML in there for everything below this point. I think I'm on a fixed up version of it, but uh, let's take a look at the template. So let's go product template. And uh, yeah, we had all this item prop stuff at the time. This would tell Google or whatever that it was a product page and give it some additional information so it could display it a little different. I don't think you see that anymore in modern themes. Uh, looks like I was looping through the images right here. We had some left and right arrows, more of that prop stuff. Here's the product select field for the variant. And uh, you just had one of them and then you use this library called option selection that would break it up. Uh, I don't think you have that anymore, but we'll see it in a second. It looks like I had a special note here for uh, a specific product and it was all hard coded in. There's the add the cart button. And uh, coming down, you got that two top button and a uh, glass bottom. We scroll down. I'm not sure what that is, but maybe we'll see in a second. And then yeah, here's that option selection library. And then I was using something called Timber, which I don't know what Timber was. Let's, this is probably something that came with the default theme, but it looks like it would change the URL when you switched variants. 
and do some other stuff. It looks like changing the prices. And then I had some special cases of certain variants were selected. Yeah, I was using something called Timber. And uh, let's see what else we got. I was using jQuery. And then here's my scripts where we got the product carousel right here. Um, Swapper switches images, I think. Um, when I would change the color, it would have to switch all the images. So I believe that's what this was doing. Coming down, it looks like you could pause it. Um, quantity selector stuff right here. Here's that billboard, how it switched the text every few seconds. It's all just basic jQuery stuff. Here's that two top button. Swapper switch the images, and then there's some fade functions. Pretty standard, basic stuff. Um, so what else could we look at in here? Let's see if there's any pages on the site. So nothing in the header. Let's go to the bottom. I don't know if these are going to display correctly, but it looks like there is a contact page. While that's loading, let's pull up the template. Um, so not a special template for it. Maybe there's a file. Page.faq. Huh, maybe it's just a normal page. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even work on this website, so maybe we'll skip that one. Looks like I had a FAQ page. Yeah, just all hard coded. It looks like it was never even used. Um, what else do we have? Page.chargers. Um, what is this? I think I remember from the cart page when they would click checkout, we would show a page in between that would upsell them. Um, yeah, add peel juice bag of three chargers to your cart, and it was a little product form. Basically, an uh, upsell page. That's all it was. And then, yeah, on the early version, I had everything in the description tag, and then it looks like I switched the te uh, separate templates for each product. And um, that's pretty much it. There's not many pages in this theme. It looks like it was just the index page, the product page, and maybe a basic page that just had some text content. And uh, yeah, that's my first ever Shopify theme. So hopefully this wasn't too boring, but you know, you could kind of see how things changed over the years and really how my coding changed. So I was a complete beginner at the time. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a trip to look at this. I haven't seen this code in probably seven, eight years. So if you like this kind of video, like and subscribe, leave a comment. If you don't like this kind of video, uh, don't let me know. Just like and subscribe anyway. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.